So how to communicate better between China and the rest of the world? We are joined in our studio by three gentlemen. Wang Hui, a professor of the Tsinghua Institute for Advanced Studies in Humanities and Social Sciences. What a pleasure, sir, to see you today. And Frank Zirin, who is a, a best-selling author and also journalist, documentary filmmaker. Meanwhile, we're joined by David Bartosz, who is a professor from the Beijing Foreign Studies University. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. I want to ask you first, the Professor Wang. It's been quite a while that we have seen a phenomenon, interestingly, from wow about China, looking at all the achievements the country has made, to fear about China. Oh, the Chinese are coming. How should we understand this? On the one hand, it's I think it's reflect the so-called phenomena of rise of China, and truly the so much, so many not only the products but overseas students and also the big companies move to they have the you show their existence in those uh, different regions and the Belt Road Initiative, uh, one plus seventeen and so on and so forth. On the one hand, it's reflected the some reality of the big existence of China, the big role of China in the world. But on the other hand, that they still the lays communication and lays information what China will do, what kind of the situation inside and outside. Mm. I think that's why a lot of the frustrations too. So mm. the double faces of that. And because of the, uh, the long history, that uh, from the very long history, the colonial time after the Cold War time, that history is still the, the obstacles for, for us to overcome, to, to have a mutual understanding. Interesting. Mr. Zihan, is history the issue here? Or is the reality the issue here? It's both. It's both. Uh, and, and I think reality is more important in the, in, the, in the first step because it's very simple from a German perspective. Uh, like 20 years ago, it was clear we had the technology, China had the big market. Now it's changing. Now it's China becomes more and more innovative. And we're missing out in Germany and Europe on certain trends, innovative trends. So that's, that is why the fear is coming up. We don't need, really know what to do. Um, because we know China is so big, so many people, China is just starting to become innovative. And uh, so the first reaction is not a good reaction, but the first reaction is fear. So we have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. How to deal with it? That will be a big issue, isn't it, Mr. Bartosz? Mm -hmm. I know you're uh, a scholar of history, particularly in Chinese studies. Any prescription so far? Oh, I think um, it's very important that um, that China is projecting more uh, understanding and knowledge uh, about its own age-old civilization to um, enable uh, the others to understand China's current and future intentions. Because um, actually, if we look at world history, uh, China is uh, in, in this age. China has a very important function to play. Namely, uh, it has to play as Arnold J. Toynbee once uh, said, the function of the world connector. Uh -huh. and, um, and in this context, uh, we face the problem that uh, there is a lack of knowledge. For example, in Germany, there's clearly a lack of understanding and there are wrong perceptions due to the interpretation of the development through an outdated form of consciousness. Yes, there is a lack of understanding on one side. On the other side, there's also a lack of ex explaining itself. I think China has not a very long and strong tradition <coughs> to explain itself to the world. It's That's just true. beginning with One Belt, One Road initiative. Before, China was more concentrated on itself. Now it needs to explain That's itself in a way that the other, others understanding it. And that's quite difficult. You know, when we to, talk to, about to China, it's, 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 it's certainly a very complicated issue, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, to say the least, right? You know better than I do. Uh, but at least there are two things that we need to figure out, Professor Wang. Is it about the traditional China, the Chinese way of thinking things, the Chinese mm. manner, the Chinese history, or is it about China today? meaning contemporary yeah. China. Which needs more explanation from your perspective? Which is even more important? 
Now I think that the more about the modern and the contemporary. Because of course the traditional China and also the, its tradition, it's very relevant and important. Without the understanding of long history of China, it's very difficult to understand the reality. Yeah. But that has transformed through the whole 20th century and now the 21st century. These truly beyond the most of people's expectation, not only for the foreigners, but also for Chinese. So we need to do some a reinterpretation mm. of ourselves and explain it to the world. But on the other hand, to understand other is always related to the self-understanding. Mm. For European countries and for Germany, I think that a lot of the frustrations about the new con contradictions mm -hmm. within Germany, mm -hmm. sometimes I feel that you can also see some shadows of the self-contradiction over to the image from outside. It's actually, actually a lack, one example or two. It's like actually a lack of uh, being able to, yeah. to change perspective. Mm. Yeah. For ex example, if you talk about a topic like data security, we in Germany, we had the Third Reich, we had uh, GDR, there was a misuse of data. In China, people more see it from the perspective of be having uh, data uh, to, be, to become more transparent, to have a better order. It's a different history, yeah. and we need to sit together and to talk about it, to mm. exchange our points of view, and probably we can find in, in either perspective some um, aspects we can learn about each other. Okay, here's another yeah. issue, uh, Professor Wang, I, I, and Frank, if I could yeah. be really frank here, that <laughs> is, there is some who believe uh, these days the difficulties of communication. The matter is whether you can wake up someone who pretend to sleep, in other words, whether want to listen or not. I guess it, it comes both ways, in a way. Uh, so I want to, at least it's, both of you, to solve this problem sleeping. for us. It's, it's not about sleeping. It's not about sleeping. It's, it's, it's about, about hibernating? No, it's about different perspectives okay. and di different values and different histories. And suddenly these histories uh, um, are clashing in a kind of a way. Exactly. Because in the last 500 years it was easy. The West was able to set the rules and that's it. Now we are merging into different times, yeah. into a multipolarian world order, and it means that other views are going to become or are already more important. And Great, uh, okay, di yeah. diverse, perspective, yes. diverse perspective, but at the same time you mentioned one factor important, speed. Yeah. Now we are seeing a huge speeding up of the speed and the yeah. need for communication. We are not prepared well for understand each other because of the, it's really the acceleration of mm. the change. And a lot of things we are, for example, technological innovation, what will lead us to eventually what's the, the future. And also a lot of the geopolitical transformation mm. was also very, is also very important. All we at the know. same time. All at the same time. One layer after another, also, adding up. We also Eventually, I think that the things, especially not only the 400 years, but since 19th century, mm. that this is the first time non-Western countries suddenly occupied a certain position in the global history. In that sense, we all, the, both Chinese or other countries, need yeah. to rethink about the global order, what yeah. all this order. But so what you have mentioned, easy, Professor, it's interesting because I want to go to Mr. Bartosz also about that. That is, when you say for the very first time a so-called non-Western country now yeah. becoming to, uh, closer to the center of the stage, what are you referring to? Uh, I would say this is it. You already said that every, this everything comes to together. It, this, is, it? this is it. It's yeah. everything coming together. And I think this poses us with all these problems. And we have to uh, evolve our thinking. We have to create new concepts. For example, I have introduced, I want to get away from the terms like soft power or hard power. I, I think to understand China, we have to have a new term. I would call it harmonic power. Harmonic power means wow. that we, that we uh, bring together the different elements of different world civilizations, different cultures, and we sort out what is still useful for us as a world community. You, you, and could, in this have, context, you could have one yeah, terminology yeah. or another yeah. terminology. It doesn't yeah, it's matter. Not but what is really the it's real action here? It's very important to understand, for example, that we in Germany or in Europe, we have a certain history and we have, we have certain experiences. And out of these experiences, we develop certain values 
And we, if we, even if we like to change them, we can't really change them yeah. because it's our experience. And the same is happening mm. um, with China. Yeah. China has its historical experience mm. as well. So therefore, I wouldn't distinguish between the, the, the present and the history mm. because it's all in one. It's like in a... It, well, and it has a lot to do with not only with the essence of it, but also with mm. the narrative of yeah. it, isn't it, Professor Wang? Yes, I think so. Um, uh, Partly because we, for example, in Germany, you have the uh, Oriental Studies mm -hmm. before. It's a long history for mm -hmm. perceiving China in such way. But modern China, how to describe it, is still the big issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also, the, uh, I feel that on the one hand, we feel a lot of the common challenges, mm -hmm. both in Germany and also the contradictions, the conflicts in your country, in China or other countries. Mm -hmm. However, when we un understand others or interpret others, mm -hmm. usually we not involve ourselves mm -hmm. or the country uh, within ourselves mm -hmm. right. to together to understand that this is a common challenge in the global era. Mm -hmm. yes. So that I think that uh, how can we develop a new perspective, not only for from the singular perspective from Germany, France, right. China or others, but also together is inevitable, but on the other hand we need to a global it's perspective even difficult to see in that. Europe. We're yeah. fighting, we're struggling right. in sure. Europe well, of course. to find a common ground. And I think yeah. we also have to think about the term heritage in a new way. Because heritage is not just something to be put in an archive, but what you said is actually we have to work with the heritage to to, to create something new to use the heritage to be inspired, to use all the work of genius so in China yes. and other parts okay, of the world. Okay, I mean, you thinkers have all expressed themselves. Allow me to also yeah. express myself a little <laughs> bit. I'm a journalist. <laughs> so I have a lot of agenda on my table every day. These are the headlines you have to deal with, right? Yes. But then you also have things much more behind it, which is the overall huge background. So easy to do it black and white. Mm -hmm. And the audience, some of them could love it. Mm -hmm. but. It's not the real thing. We but all know that. You could simply say, I understand what you are doing and why you are doing it, but I would do it in a different way. Yes, that exactly. would be a start to talk to each other. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. whether we can do it in a different way, whether we are trying mm -hmm. to do it in a different way, or we refer to our old, tool tape, uh, old tools to deal with the new things, which of course wouldn't right. work. So Professor Wang, I know you are a cultural study expert. You've been doing research about Tibet, Xinjiang, and you name it, many of the controversial issues that the, the international media put at the mm -hmm. headlines. So tell me about what do you think is the best way to communicate, even as a scholar? And what do you think are the most difficult things to communicate about, whether it is your issue or the other side's issue? I think, for me, most of discussion not in the media, but uh, it's even difficult in the academic discussion mm. because you, the people only sometimes show their positions not to analyze the facts or the what's going on there and here and there. And especially they have no the linkage between the issues in, for example, in your country and in our countries. What's the, the common challenge for that? Give a certain space to analyze that the situation. That's, I think, the most important way. But you know, the Western side is yes. not like an iron board. Mm -hmm. The Chinese side also have different opinions as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how can we communicate about the sophistication mm -hmm. and the sophisticated realities as well? Mm -hmm. Professor Wang, and then I go to Mr. Bartosz. Please, mm -hmm. Professor. I think there's the first word, such to choose from the facts. Still, <laughs> the, I think the basic <laughs> approach. The first of all, we need to know that what's going on. That's yeah. then we the can fact. make the, the, the basic judgments yeah. for it and also then the an analyze. Second, I think that the, we talk about the Western media, Chinese media, though we talk about different, even different visions from each other, mm -hmm. different societies. But I think we also need to learn more from other side, other countries. Mm. It's been like uh, Islamic countries, African countries, right. Latin American countries, at least I know that, that there were different divisions from need to the Western media. Well. Yeah. So that's why. Agree. So, yeah. so for that, and also you can find the more commonalities, common challenges, and a crisis together. We find that way. So in that sense, I think for not only mutual, 
but multilateral understanding. Yeah. Not necessarily to overcome the contradiction, the conflicts, but still we can have a more sophisticated uh, understanding of the situation. Great said. Yeah. Great said. Uh, Mr. Bartosz, uh, shall we go to the other one and come back? Please, and I, I would also uh, I very much agree with what you have said, and I would say we have to try to find a way to develop methods to make our differences complementary. Yeah. Yeah. So to, to, to build a world system where we accept the differences because the difference at the same time is the connecting yeah. element. It's, it's, it's dialectically speaking, it's also the unity, the unifying mm -hmm. element. Uh, it's, it's, it's that which uh, provides us with plurality, with all the yeah. beautiful culture that we see, all the, all the different thoughts and the different thoughts, the different perspectives are the, the treasury of humanity. Let, so let's not, have, well, a, said, but it's let's not have a fact-free discussion, no, and yeah. I mean, rather a discussion with the real facts. Before we go find a word no, for I, you... I want to say, I want yeah. to say, I think these, uh, the problems that you mentioned, they are more kind of like the birth pangs of, of a new consciousness which is emerging, a multi-perspective consciousness, and we have to accept them for, for, for what it I is. I love that. Yeah, half empty or half full. Certainly, mm -hmm. Professor Bartosz is saying, Half wall there. It's and a very Fred, good idea. Final so word. Final word. Yes, but it sounds a bit too easy for me. It's, uh, we don't have to underestimate it. No, I'm how not complicated I, it is. Sure. Even if if I discuss with my wife, yes. she has her facts. I have yes. my facts. Yes. And we have to find a way to get along. Yeah. French and Germans have to find a way to get along. That's right. Shenzhen people and Beijing people. Mm -hmm. sure. So the I didn't want to make good, it look too easy. But right. <laughs> yeah, but don't underestimate it. Yeah. It's a lot of work sure, of course. and it's a lot of self-control you need. Yeah, but and it's a lot of will to really work together. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, there's a, still a lack of the will to work together and to really build a multipolarian world order. But especially for those people who have the power, I mean, yes. in the media, yes. that the strong voices, mm -hmm. to have more allow other voices to speak out. That's, I think, the most important thing. I know, at the yeah. end of this conversation, yeah. all the arrows will lead to my industry, which is the media. <laughs> <laughs> my industry as well. Uh, okay, yeah. well, putting this joke aside, I yeah. really want to thank the yeah. three of you, gentlemen, for helping yeah. us much better about some of the controversies and the importance of communication between yeah. China and the rest of the world. We've been talking about that for a long time, but the thing really is about doing it, yeah. how to mm -hmm. do it mm -hmm. wonderfully. Right. Thank you, Frank <laughs> Ziren and Wang Hui, as well as David Bartosz. Really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Yeah. Happy Thank New you. Year to the three of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. And Happy that is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us World Inside CGTN into your search engine or check out our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook. From me, Tian Wei, and everyone on the World Inside team, thanks for watching. And tune in again tomorrow for our World Inside Year End Special Braving Uncertainty. Bye for now.